to make the pattern for the heel section, uh, just one half of the pattern is in the book. Um, so you have to um, take a scrap piece of paper and draw around th the uh, first pattern to create a copy of it. Then tape the two together down the heel. And then when you punch holes for stitching around all the edges, you punch through both pieces at the same time. And then if you want to have a heel cover, you can get the pattern from off of that same um, heel section pattern. Um, just cut half of this out and fold and um, fold it over and make another piece so it turns out to look like this. And then of course to do to get the stitch holes, I copy the stitch holes from here, but when it's folded, then they go through to both layers. So I've got my whole heel section pattern right here. So here's my heel piece. Um, I'm drawing around this with a uh, gel pen or the gel pen refill, which I don't, you don't really need that plastic part. Um, so I'm marking all the stitch holes and where the laces go. I'm not going to punch out these um, in the leather yet. Um, but I will punch out all the ones down here. I think I've got them. Yep. So then I'll take a pair of scissors and start cutting along these silver lines. These are kind of uh, inexpensive scissors from Tandy Leather, but they're not bad. So I'll continue uh, cutting out this piece. If you'd like to put a heel cover, a heel support piece on the this um, heel piece of the shoe before it gets stitched together, um, you can cut half of it off from the pattern and then double that over and you'll get this and um, so I can cut this out as well and I will make the marks for the stitch marks and punch them out but I'll, I'll wait until I have this uh, cover piece glued in place and then I'll be cutting I'll be punching out both the heel cover and the heel piece at the same time. So I'll draw around this like do with all the pieces with uh, the silver pen and uh, punch out all, where all the stitch holes go and I'll punch them out and then I'll be ready to um, cement this to the actual heel piece. Before I punch out all of these uh, stitch marks, I'm going to do some skiving, and that means to thin the leather down. And with stitch downs, you're going to turn that, you'll turn the edge out um, of the upper when it is cemented to the top sole. And if you've got a thick piece of leather, and it can get pretty thick if you've got a pretty heavy, uh, like four to five ounce heel cover, and four to five ounce leather that you're using for the heel section, um, it can be pretty thick and hard to turn out to really get it seated like you'd like to have it. So <clears throat> that's where skiving comes in. This will thin the leather down. I use this thing called a, a skif. It's, um, it's, I think it would probably be much better to use a, a knife that I keep nice and sharpened, but I just haven't 
put that as a priority yet, so I'm still using this. It has a, a razor blade that you have to change pretty frequently. So I'm going to thin down the um, this part, and I usually work um, with the blade in this position, and then I come along here and take off some of the layer of leather. And uh, it's hard to get a grip on this one, so I'll just kind of go along here and make some divots. Just so I get it thinned and don't cut through it. If I can do that, I'll be happy. I'll clean this up a bit more later. And um, I have to do the same thing with the uh, heel piece. So I, I made some marks on here, uh, here and here, uh, that shows the um, amount of space the bottom of the heel cover takes up. So I'm going to dig in here and thin this down. You want to be pretty uh, bold in doing this. There, I'm getting bolder here. Some, you frequently need to change these blades, unfortunately. Here you see that I've skived um, both of these areas along the bottom edge. Now I'm ready to uh, apply cement to the back of this, uh, to the back of the heel cover, and to this area inside the outline of the heel cover, so that I can, um, after it dries, cement the heel cover on, and then. Um, punch stitching holes through both layers. So that's glue that I need for the <coughs> area on the heel piece and then I'll cement this piece and wait for them to dry. My cement has dried on both of these surfaces, so I'll put this heel support piece in place. And then um, I have marks every one quarter inch. When I'm stitching on the upper, I usually use a, a quarter inch between stitches. Uh, for stitching the uppers to the sole, I usually use a centimeter, so these are a little bit further apart. So here's my zero zero drive punch. Uh, you can use a spring punch to punch holes, but you can't reach with that spring punch into holes that are this far from the edge of the leather. So so you sooner or later you got to use a the zero zero drive punch. And so I've got a end cut cutting board underneath it. And I've got a maul here. So this is pretty heavy and um, gives you some extra force, but a, a rubber mallet will also work. So I'll do some punching. Continue along here. This rhythm. And also while I'm at it, I might as well punch out these holes too. I'm not going to punch those out because uh, I might need to go through two layers there. So I get these and then the bottom edge punched out. If you're using this waxed braided thread, 
it's um, nice to be able to anchor the needle so that it doesn't come off the end. So I'm puncturing the different strands that this thread is made from with the needle and then uh, pulling it down. And uh, if my thread is too long, I can uh, make this loop bigger and uh, then I'll be secure that this, that this needle is not going to come off the end of the thread. I've punched holes all the way around the uh, heel support piece um, so that the holes go through both layers. So I'm ready to stitch. See, there's still a little bit of silver gel pen left, so this is um, the natural rubber soling removes it, as well as um, you know, those magic sponges that you can get at the dollar store. So now I'm going to do the two needle running stitch. So I've um, cut this thread to about four times the distance around here. It's a little, there's quite a bit, of, there'll be extra thread, but uh, I try not to skimp since I've run out too many times when I didn't want to. So I have needles on both ends of these of this thread. So I'm taking it from the top side down and then from the bottom. And again, I'm wanting to um, take this thread over. I want to this is on the back side now. I want to take this thread over the one that's already in the hole. So I'm pulling the one that's in the hole kind of out to the side and then uh, so I won't puncture the thread. And now it's up at the top and so this would be a good time to even out the lengths of thread. One more. Hold this out of the way and stitch. I completed stitching the heel support piece and I'm ready to tie a double square knot. That, so that means I'm going right over left, but two times around, and pull that tight, and that st stays in place, which is really nice, not having to um, hold your finger there. And then I'll do uh, left over right. Two times there. Pull that, and I have a knot that's uh, going to stay in place. I'll take these threads under a couple of the other stitches and then clip them off. I always try to make the knots down at the uh, bottom edge um, that keeps them away from parts of your foot that might uh, be, be uncomfortable. And uh, then I'll clip these threads off. Just pull them tight. And I'll, I'll pound that stitch, that knot, with um, the rubber mallet.